morning how is everybody let's go Stephen good morning uh good morning Ronan good morning Isla good morning Lucy um, let's have a quick check in. I know Isla said she was missing her friends from school. I think a lot of people are doing that. My daughters were saying um, they. Um, I was asked them to do some work the other day, and they went, oh, "I miss school. I want to be with my friends." So I think we're probably all feeling a bit like that at the moment. So hang in there. Feel that feeling. It's okay to feel like that, um, and then move on. Maybe try and do a bit of exercise, or maybe you could FaceTime a friend, or text them, or maybe bake a cake. Baking seems to be very popular in my house, if people want to cheer up. You're good, are you, Stephen? Excellent. Okay, so that's our check-in. I'm feeling okay today as well. I woke up a bit sluggish this morning, I think, because it's raining for the third day, and we had such a lovely spell of lovely weather that I'm struggling with not having my sunshine. So I need to get out in the rain, I think, and get a bit of daylight. So that's my check-in. Um, also, I have a new pen because our pen ran out yesterday and I was going through all my stuff from school and I managed to find a brand new um, black pen. So we're back on with a decent pen. So I know that will cheer you up, Rona, particularly. OK, let's have a quick retrieval from yesterday and do our spelling quiz. So you need a pen and a paper. And yesterday we did the letter. Can you remember? Okay, so almost a whisper when you say it. So you go for pen, okay? Because when you say pen, you don't go, you know, you don't want to say p, okay? Because when you say pen, you don't go per n, do you? You don't say I have a new per n. So you want to go. P. It's the smallest unit of sound you can possibly make for each letter, and that's that will help your spelling. Good morning, Flory. Good to see you. Okay, so yesterday was the letter p. And we also doubled it up, didn't we? So we looked at um, we looked at pet and puppy, but we also looked at words like happy, um, so which have got the double p in. So that was our uh, retrieval for the letter. P. Have a practice of saying, p. don't say p, okay? Because if you say p, um, then it doesn't help with your spelling because you might end up spelling it p-u-h, okay? So smallest unit of sound. Remember when you're saying these letters, and also, let's have our little quiz. So our quiz is 10 words, five from yesterday, and then five extra, okay? So do you have your pen and paper ready? Number one. Number one is can't. Now, I had a quick look yesterday at my yesterday's video, and I made a mistake, I don't know why. I said can't was the shortened version for could not. And of course it isn't, it's for can not. So don't go and spell could. Um, so can't. I can't go. I can't sunbathe today. There we go. Because it's raining. Can't. Remember, it's an apostrophe which replaces some of the word, some of the letters for can not. So see if you can remember where to put the apostrophe and which letters you'd leave out. Number. Now, there was a bit controversial, this one, because I said it was new, and then I realised we'd done it before, and then I decided to keep it. Um, so it's another, another day of rain, another. Number three was a colour and a, and a fruit, spelt the same, mean different things. Orange. I ate an orange for breakfast this morning. Or you could say, I have an orange jumper. Orange. And number four was another colour. I think orange and grey would look really nice together too. It's grey. Okay, the colour grey. So you might have a grey squirrel. Oh, it's sunny in East Sussex, but a bit windy. Oh, we've got wind and rain here. Missing the sun. We had such a lovely spell, didn't we? Okay, number four was grey. Number five, because. I'm going to wear my raincoat today because it's raining. Because. Remember the sounds, if you can't spell the whole word, think about any sounds that you can hear. 
So what does it start with? What might it end with? What's the middle if it's two syllables or more? So because. So you could certainly hear the b, couldn't you? Because. And you can hear the k. So even if you can't get every letter, you should be able to get some of them. Okay, Let, spelling's all about the sound. Number six. Okay, so we're on to words that we've done over the last 21 lessons. Um, and it's here. Not the here with your ear, but the over here. So, um, or here. Here is my new pen. Here. Number seven. Could. Could. I could go out without a coat, but I might get wet. Could. Number eight. Number eight is thought. I thought it was going to be sunny today, but it turns out it's raining. You can see I'm a bit obsessed with the weather, can't you? That's what lockdown does to you. <laughs> Eight is thought. And number nine rhymes with thought, but um, a different spelling, different meaning, just the same similar rhyming sound is caught. Okay, so you can, um, I caught a cold, I caught the ball, I caught a fish, if you go fishing, so it's caught, not a tennis court. Or a, no, you wouldn't have a football court, would you? That's a pitch. So a court that you play tennis on, that's a different spelling. If you want to know how to spell that, I'll put it up as well later. But we're looking at, it comes from the word catch. So our root word would be catch. Um, and it's the past tense, caught. I caught a ball, caught. And the last one, number 10, is wood. Not wood as in from the tree, um, the material wood, but as in I would go out, but it's raining. Or I would like to meet you for a cup of tea, would. Comes from the word will. Okay, how do you think you did? Again, um, if you're new to this, don't worry about... Um, spelling every single letter right so if you if you get it wrong don't just cross out the whole word tick for success so if we did the first word can't for instance so it's c a n so that's the word can and then apostrophe which replaces n and o for not doesn't it and then a t so i can't go out today or we can't go out because we're in lockdown so can't well done Stephen you got 10 if however so if you'd spelt can't like this so you've done car which would make sense wouldn't it and then can't so you might have spelt can't like that say so instead of crossing out the whole word tick c tick a realize that that's not right and then you can tick n put an apostrophe in there and tick T. Okay, so suddenly you're thinking, rather than you've got the whole word wrong, you're thinking, oh, okay, it was only one. I missed the apostrophe and I it doesn't need an R. Okay, so that's how you should do your spelling corrections. It makes you much better at correcting spellings. You become a bit of a spelling detective, okay, by ticking those letters and, and ticking those letters and it's ticking marking for success, so it makes you feel better as well. Okay, there's nothing worse than just crossing out the whole word and thinking I can't spell, is there? So, because we can all do bits of spelling. So 10 out of 10 for Stephen, uh, well done, but number two is another. So a, n, so a, n, and then a, f, uh. Okay, so that's the tricky bit, isn't it? Because you'd think that might be a u or an a uh sound and it's an o. So another, number three, orange. I'm gonna draw an orange, I like to do a bit of drawing. Okay, that's my orange. 
I could even colour it in orange, couldn't I, if I had an orange pen? Okay, so oh, 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 that's difficult, isn't it? Because it's like orange. So e, n, t, orange. So you can hear the n, and you can hear the t at the end. You have to remember to put an e on, and you know it starts with an o. And you can hear the r, orange. So it's just that bit there that's tricky, where the a is. Okay, number four is grey. So you've got grrr. So grrr. You hear the grrr. And then a sound. And the a sound uses these e and a y for that sound. So if you don't know that sound yet, you might find grey difficult to spell. Okay, but once you realise this is there, sometimes you might see grey spelled like this. A Y. Okay, I've got a feeling that's Amer American. Somebody Americans might spell grey like that. I think, not too sure, but you might see it like that. But the spelling we're after is E Y. And number five is because. Okay, so we've got B. The letter B and E, B and then K. And then this is the hard bit. So you've got B, E, C, A, U, S, E. B, cuz. Two syllables as well, B, cuz. So you've got B and then K. And that is sometimes pronounced on um, this bit of the word. You can say cause, so the cause of something. So... So it's almost like because then. That's why our language is quite tricky. Okay, hello, Ollie. Um, number six, hear. Okay, now this here is with your ear. And there's a little trick to remembering that because of this word here, ear. Okay, so that's here with your ear. But we're looking at here as in the placement. So with an arrow here. Okay, and that's H. Still got the sound and then ear, here. Oh, you're sad, Lucy. That's a shame. Sorry to hear that. Okay, number seven. Hopefully we can cheer you up with a bit of spelling. Number seven is could. Okay, I could. I could try... Try and um, cheer Lucy up. I'm just thinking how many sounds that is. Could. Yeah, it's just two. Could. So that's really hard, isn't it? You've got to remember that. Okay. And then we have thought. Now, with thought, you can hear the sound, can't you? So, and then you've got this bit, which is hard in the middle. Or, and then it ends with a T. Thought. Okay, it's quite a tricky one. So it's just remembering how to spell O-U-G-H. And in could, it's remembering how to spell the O-U part. It's a silent L too, isn't it? So maybe O-U-L. Okay, number nine, caught. Now, notice it rhymes with thought, doesn't it? I thought I caught. But actually, they are spelt very, very differently. So you've got K there. And then you've got or sound, which is A U G H, so k, or, and then t. Okay, if you were ticking for that, even if you got that middle bit wrong, you could have got the k and the t caught. So you might be able to tick those two. Your ears sore today, Stephen. Am I talking too loudly? I'll try and talk quietly. Number 10, wood. Okay. Oh, I wanted to show you as well, for court, a tennis court, so this type of court for tennis, okay, is spelt like this. It's a very different spelling and different meaning, so k, or t, yeah. So this has got an A-U-G-H for catch, from the word catch, and this for a tennis court is O-U-R in the middle. So they've still got a k and a t on the beginning and end, haven't they? That's okay, Lucy. We all sit. It's good. If you feel sad, it's always good to sit with your feelings, and that's okay. And then feel them and then try to do something um, to help. But it's okay to feel sad. 
Okay, and um, quite understandable, isn't it, in these days? And the last one, would. So, w, u, this is the tricky bit, and then d. So you can hear the w and the d, the o-u-l is hard, isn't it? And look, though, it's the same as could, and also should. Okay, so for could, would, should, then you can remember that o-u-l and just hear the letters at the beginning and the end. Okay, nine out of ten for Flory. Well done. Just caught to work on. Yeah, that's hard though, isn't it? Did you get the k and the t right? That's the main thing to hear that. Ten out of ten for Ronan. Brilliant. Eight out of ten for Isla. Again, struggled with caught. Yes, I can see that and thought. But they're ones to learn, and you will. The more you see those words and the more you practice them, then the easier you will be able to spell. But do remember the beginning and the end, because at least if you get those bits right, that is going to help. Okay, right, we're done. I just wanted to show you, like court, we've got court from catch and court as in a tennis court. And then with wood, we've got wood as in from the word will. Okay, willing things, and I will do it, so I would do it. But we've also got the wood as in from furniture and trees, the material wood. And you spell that, that's an easier one to spell. Because it's w, u, d. Okay, so it's got those double O's in it. Okay, so just remember these two words, they mean different things and they're spelt differently, but they do sound the same. Okay, and that's part of being a spelling detective. Doesn't matter if you get these things wrong. The main thing is that you notice and then you try and fix it next time. Okay, but it does take a while. Don't be hard on yourself. A lot of these are very difficult spellings. Okay, and it's more about hearing to begin with and then noticing the difference and actually being curious. So that's quite interesting, isn't it? You can say, oh, that's interesting. They sound the same, but they're spelt differently, or these are the relationships. So that's what spelling is all about. Okay, so well done, everybody, for giving you a go with that, with our quiz. And you will see on my board, uh, what number are we on? 20 seconds, our 22nd letter. And you'll notice that I did the letters in order of handwriting. So um, we had all the C and cousins, the C and A and O, because they're all nice and curvy. And then we had the I and the L. And now we've got some ones that start at the top and come down if you're printing. And if you're joining, you still have to go up and down. So that's why F is so late on, even though it's quite early on in the alphabet. OK, so let's have a look. So our capital F, does it look, we always talk about, does it look like it's lowercase? And it does, except for it's not curvy. So it's got a straight top and it's got straight down. So it goes like a right angle in maths and then you put your cross okay and remember it takes up the whole line as well so this is our halfway line a capital f takes up the whole line so have a good practice of doing a capital f and then if you're printing that means not joined up your way of writing an f you start here and you go down and then you put a cross. So the cross is the same, isn't it? And it's always halfway line. This is our imaginary halfway line. If you're practicing handwriting, it's sometimes worth putting that line in just to help you with the plate, what we call placement. OK, and as you know, as I always say, I'm much more important in the formation and the direction to begin with rather than the neatness. But if you're on to looking at lines like that, then you can do that. OK, so it takes up the difference for this lowercase f is that it takes up the whole line because most of our letters, if you think of our C or our I, see, they only take up half the line, don't they, for our lowercase letters, whereas the f takes up the whole line. So it's a bit different. Now, if you're doing joined up, then we always start on the line, don't we, when we're practicing joined up? And we go up and around and then back down and then cross over for our F. Some of you, including me sometimes, 
um, might write your Fs like that. OK, and there are different ways. And if you're old like me, you may remember, if there's any parents watching, doing Fs like that. OK, so but currently using the Redry ink that we're using um, for our spellings, then we do it the whole line. OK, so have a little practice. Do it if you're still at the direction mode, do it nice and big. Or if you're joining, just get the direction right. Have a go at joining up other things. OK, for four or whatever, just have a good old practice. You can do it in shaving foam. You can do it outside with chalk and a watering can. Just get the direction right. That's the most important. Neatness will come after. OK, but get the direction and the formation of your letters right. OK, and the last thing for F, the letter F, before we start thinking about the sound, is the sign. Anybody know the sign for F? It's like this. So you have two fingers. Whoa, where am I? Two fingers like this. And you put them, if you're right-handed, that goes on the top. If you're left-handed the other way, and you do that, okay, just one tap though, um, F. So that's F. So remember your vowels, A, E, I, O, U. So if you're doing E, F, G, H, okay? So practice your F. And then the last thing for the letter F is also the sound. So we can either do, we can, we're going to look at doubling up our F. And we're also looking at the sound. So it's so your two your teeth come out and they touch your lips. You do that, and it's very different. These are the three sounds that people often mix up. So you've got an F, a TH, or a M. And people get these mixed up, but actually, if you think about where they are and where your teeth are and your tongue and your lips then actually you can work it out. So this is a, you do that, so feather, from, for, okay? This is a sound, and that's more, it's got a tongue between your teeth, so you go, so a, it's like that, and a, so slightly different, and we call that our auditory discrimination, so, discriminating between these three sounds is really important for spelling that single sound and the final one and this interestingly comes like with the word vibrate because you can almost feel it vibrating so you go mm, mm, like a razor or something or if you're doing your own hair at the moment during lockdown there's no barbers open aren't they my son's going going um, bonkers because he likes to have his hair really short but that razor sound, okay? So let's just practice them again and really hear and feel those sounds. So you've got Yeah, and it's important. Lots of people get those mixed up. I once had a discussion with one of my pupils and he was talking about the superhero, Thor. Oh, I can't see it, sorry, Thor. So he was talking about Thor, but because he'd spelt it with an F, I thought he was talking about the number four. And we had a whole conversation where I couldn't understand him because he was talking about Thor, I'm talking about films, and I was hearing four. So it's very important, isn't it, to get that right. Okay, so have a practice. If that's one of your things, particularly if you've got dyslexia, that will be one of the things that you do struggle with. So just a lot of practice. And what you could do is have a bag and you could have lots of, in fact, this could be something fun for you to do today, is, oh, Isla, so spells F instead of F. So one of the things you could do today, Isla, and anybody else that's interested, get a little bag and go around collecting things. Okay, and so you might be able to collect a feather or a number four, and you might be able to collect a, a thimble or a picture of a thumb, and then you might be able to um, collect a 
or draw a violin and then have a little bag with all the different maybe try and find four for each and then have a practice yeah but it's very common so don't worry about it just practice it okay Right, so let's have a work, but we are now doing f, okay? So, in fact, we try not to say f, because a bit like p, it's too, too, too long a sound. So you, it's f, okay? So what words have we got that begin with f? I know I've mentioned four, so we could do four. So four. And we've also got that four haven't we so this is the number four and this is four as in i'm writing i'm writing to my auntie for her birthday okay so there too we've also got fog okay i'm really trying to do the f's right i've got a bit of a bad habit because i used to curl mine under so I'm trying to keep them like how I'm teaching you on the line there straight okay fog we've got Fred so I'm going to do a capital F for Fred okay Fred. we've got mm, fat At oh, Rona, very good. Fields that reminds me of fields of poppies. I love seeing fields of poppies, and that's quite a hard one to spell as well. Look, e old fields or field funny, very good, and you've got fun. Uh, mm. and then if we do our rule it's one syllable fun fun it's got this short vowel an uh sound and a consonant on the end so we can double up our ends to make funny okay free some good ones here e lovely okay and uh, let's have a look. So we had Ronan with fields. And we had um, Flory, F for Flory. Yeah, absolutely. So Florence. Florence is the middle name of one of my daughters as well, Flory. Um, yeah, so that's an F and a capital because it's a name. And then you've got frog, four, floor, fluffy, fridge. Very good. Um, Isla, it's got stuff and fluff. So you're moving on to the double Fs, which we'll look at. And Ronan's gone for the car brands of Ford and Fiat. Very good. And Lucy's also gone for double Fs, Cliff and Sniff. Very good. So let's have a look at that double F. Okay, so there are lots of words that begin with F, aren't they? So if you notice, they're all beginning with F. So we also have F in between words. And some words end in an F as well. So let's have a look at some double up ones. So if you're doubling up, okay, let's have a think about, well, let's go for some of Isla's. So we've got stuff, stuff and fluff. And we've also got buff. Oh, buff. There we go. Oh, Alexandra, so your middle name. So I've got an Alex Flory. Um, Alex Flory, yeah, lovely. Okay, so let's go for Cliff and Sniff. So we've got cl, cl, i, and then f, Cliff. Okay. And we've got Buff, so from Stephen. There's the brand buff, isn't there? There's also the colour. Some of you might prefer to have buff coloured paper if you're reading off it for sometimes. Okay. And then, yes, I'm thinking about um, Huffle and Puffle from Harry Potter. Uh, Lucy, but yes, we've got Huff. 
And then, yeah, if we wanted to add, so that would be our root word, really, wouldn't it? And then we could put L-E on the end, huffle. Huffle and puffles, isn't it, or something? Okay, but, yeah, we've got huff. And then we've got, oh, yeah, beginning with an F, uh, Ronan up here is fox. Yeah, good. So um, we've also got, that's what, which one, stuff. So I was thinking we've got staff, okay, the staff in your school you can have, or you can change this to an A, uh, and then what do you get? If you change the A for an A, uh, you get st, uh, f, stuff. And that's a good way of practicing spelling as well. What happens if I take this letter out and I put this letter in? What does it become? Okay. Um, I was thinking as well about a couple of other words in the middle, um, which were different. So we've got di, f, uh, rent. Different. And lots of people spell that without that E because we say different, don't we? Whereas actually, if you say it to spell it, it's different. Okay, different. But we say different. Okay, yep, Lucy family. Oh, we've gone out of time. Thank you, Ronan. Ronan's my timekeeper. Yes. So we've got lots of double Fs there. So we'll have a think about some more of those. So let's quickly do our one to five. I must have been chatting a lot today. Have I been chatting a lot today? Chit chat, chit chat. Okay, now what I've done for these five. Oh, here's a nice sentence. We have to miss out our, our sentence, don't we? The fluffy fox forgot to feel his feet on Friday. Isla, that's a perfect one for us to finish with. Well done. So I am going to give you now what I've done. For these five, I've looked at titles, all the different titles, okay, that are in our high frequency words. Just hold on one second. You will all remember to spell these, though. So we've got Mr., which is a capital M and an R. So Mr. Smith. And then we've got a Moose, okay, which is the equivalent of Mr., MS, but we also have a Mrs. Because historically it used to be Mr. and Mrs. And then some people thought, well, it doesn't seem fair that because this means you're married. If it's a Mrs., it means you're married. And some people thought, well, it's not really fair that we know women are married, but we don't know men are married. So then they came up with a Ms. But actually, what we've ended up with now is lots of different ones for women. So we've got We've got Mr, Ms, Mrs, Miss. And then the final one, which links to Miss, for boys, before they become men, they're often, it's quite old-fashioned, but it's still used, they're called Master. Okay, and um, some of the old-fashioned books that we uh, that we read, they'll often say, oh, tip your hat to Master so-and-so. But it means that you're a boy, really. And Miss often used to mean that you were a girl, but it can also mean that you're not married. And then you've got Mrs. for married, and then Ms. if you don't want to do the Mrs. and uh, Mrs. and Miss, and Mr. So there for you to remember. Stephen's going to finish us off. Oh, uh, Stephen, I'm not going to say that one on screen because it's, it might, might be a bit upsetting. But, um, yeah, so you've got Freddie the Fox and Foxy. Okay. <laughs> So, Mr, Ms, Mrs, Miss, Master. I'm going to test you on those tomorrow. And five more shuffled up. I'm going to do some of the more um, shoulds and the OUs and the AULDs and stuff. So, maybe you might want to revise those a little bit. I will see you all tomorrow. Bye-bye, everybody. I hope everybody that was feeling a bit sad feels a bit more cheered up, Lucy. And we will see you all tomorrow. Bye.